Disclaimer. The purpose of this episode is to foster open dialogue and provide information about the Israel-Palestine war from diverse perspectives. The EP podcast is a platform dedicated to encouraging conversation and understanding. The guests on this episode representing different religious backgrounds share their personal insights and experiences to contribute to a broader understanding of the complex issues surrounding the Israel-Palestine conflict. It is important to note that the information presented here is based on the guests' personal perspectives, and the intent is to create an open space for dialogue rather than to influence or sway opinions. The EP podcast aims to promote awareness, inclusivity, and respectful discussion. Listeners are encouraged to seek additional sources and perspectives to form a well-rounded understanding of the subject matter. We appreciate your engagement and welcome diverse viewpoints as we navigate through this complex and sensitive topic. Thank you. All right, so I have to give you a little bit of credit for this. Yeah, we can overdub it later. Just so. <laughs> I haven't had any crazy stories about. Oh wait, no, I do. I got I got robbed at a gunpoint, mugged. Looking yeah. for me, but I ain't checking for them. No. <laughs> it's a sleazy real estate guys. New flash, but. <laughs> All right, so guys, we have a serious episode in today's podcast. Um, initially, my goal with this podcast was to, you know, just entertain and just bring people with different backgrounds to share their stories and any valuable insights they may have. But after a while, we switched into entrepreneurs, any public figures or business owners. But part of that also goes into politics. And there's a serious topic going on in the world that I feel like, including myself, don't know enough about. So I figured this would be a good opportunity having a platform to come and talk about it. Uh, some people may not be happy with what we're going to say. Uh, some people may not agree with it. Some might. Um, I would like to just say that the goal here is to educate and inform and provide an open platform for people to come and talk about anything and everything, including this very important topic right now. So in today's episode, we're actually going to talk about the whole Israel and Palestine situation happening. And when I was looking back into my relationships, I thought of uh, two people that, that might know best to speak on a topic. And those two people are actually here with me right now. They've actually had ha episodes before in the podcast, and those two are none other than Issa J and Christian Reyes Hernandez. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. My man. Good to see you guys, as always. I appreciate you guys doing this. I know it's, it's, a, pleasure. Um, pleasure. it's a sensitive topic to go into, but I'm hoping that we're able to have a proper discourse here and just really speak with one another and just kind of pick each other's brain on the on the whole situation, what's happening with Palestine and Israel. Um, especially you, Reyes. Uh, you were a surprise last-minute guest. We were brainstorming before we even recorded this, and Reyes just seemed to be well-versed in areas of the history and the whole situation. So, you know, I figured, why not just join us on the conversation? And that's what we're doing right now. So we're going to do this. I just want to set the ground on your guys' background just so people know who it is exactly that they're listening to and maybe why they should listen to you. So, uh, Isa, if you don't mind just starting us up with that. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Isa, and I'm from the state of Delaware. I also, my family came to the U.S. from Eritrea. If you don't know where it is, it borders Ethiopia and Sudan and Djibouti. And I'm grateful and excited to be on this podcast again. Okay. Reyes. Hi, everybody. So, uh, my name's Christian Reyes, and then uh, just call me by my last name, Reyes. That's how everybody knows me by. But uh, background, um, 29 years old, uh, currently just barbering. That's what I do currently for as a you know, full-time gig. And, uh, you know, I would like to delve into history a lot. I was always a history buff, if you will, all throughout, like, elementary middle and high school and then after now it i consider it kind of like a hobby just researching um more so for you know just uh it was always for just you know you know uh pastime kind of thing just to do uh but now it's more with everything going on with uh current events 
I think it's even more so important to actually know what's, uh, you know, what this means, you know, as far as history, how yeah, that can, uh, how it ties back to current events, like past history. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me. Like always, yeah. man, it's a yeah, pleasure. And, and Ray, it's just, if, if you could also tell us, like, what religion do you practice? Uh, so it's not a religion. Uh, it's more so just um, doing everything that, you know, according to the Bible. So it's not a, a okay. would you say, a, a religion? Okay. So I guess I consider myself Christian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and Isa here, what 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 religion is it that you practice? The religion is Islam. Okay. So I'm a Muslim. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then just for people that that don't know about me is uh, I grew up in a Catholic household. However, the the whole practice of of being Catholic didn't really carry on much onwards afterwards. Uh, but you know, I'm always uh, open to learning and hearing about different religions, and I'm here to set the stage in terms of playing the person of that doesn't really understand what's going on, right? And I'm hoping to pick you guys' brain and understand the whole situation a whole lot better. How does that sound? Sounds amazing. Okay. Yep. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So I guess the the best way we could tackle this whole situation is is uh, starting with. Who are the party? The parties involved, the main, the main party. So, is it Israel and Palestine, or is there also a, a third party? All right. So, pretty much the main two parties involved that we notice as we, whether we watch the news or do our own research or both, or the original land of Palestine, as well as now, Israel occupied uh, many parts. So basically Israel and Palestine, to answer your question. And secondarily, we can also say the border countries, as well as the countries that are involved in backing either country in terms of support and whatnot and funding. So that's my general answer. Okay. I'm going to hit the, you know, right on the head with, with the two uh, main parties involved, which is Israel, Nation of Israel, and uh, the Palestinians. Okay. And and I guess that the, the next bigger question I go into is... Um, before I do that, actually, because I know it's a whole Israel Palestine thing, but you also hear other other like parties like being also brought up, like uh, Hamas, uh, like uh, Gaza is like Gaza also a place too. Like that's why I'm I'm coming as like the person that doesn't mm-hmm. know any of this, right? So is it like Hamas? Like where does that play like like place into this? Yeah. So as far as I know, um, Hamas is not a nation. Uh, or anything like that. It's actually more like a ideology. Okay. All right. So Hamas. Um, I want to say like right after Israel became a sovereign nation, 1948. Um, they, uh, the Palestinians, um, their kind of I guess get back kind of thing was to create this ideology, Hamas. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I do know from the limited you know research and you know um, history, I do know. Uh, Hamas again is more of an ideology, so their whole goal is essentially, you know, just put it blunt, is to like eliminate Israel. Okay. Um, that you know, pretty much off the face of the earth, and that okay. that you can look this up. That's what they essentially believe in. Okay. Um, with the ide- ideology, um, yeah. So that's what it is in ideology. Can are you able to unpack that a little further, um, Isa? Oh, sure. Um, unpack the answer to your question. The, the whole Hamas and Israel situation. Okay. Um, I will admit, in terms of Hamas, um, I haven't researched 100% because due to the fact that before October 7th, most people on earth weren't even thinking about or talking about Hamas. So that's the reason being. And ever since October 7th, uh, a lot of people from the Muslim community mainly um, were just experienced some trauma from just like the genocide. So, but to answer your question, based on what I know, um, I'm, I spoke with a colleague of mine and he told me he actually lives in the Middle East. And he told me that initially Hamas did not have a good objective and purpose. Mm-hmm. And like, like responded to what, uh, Rhea said, right. Um, Apparently, like, I also heard about Hamas initially having a purpose of eliminating Israel. Okay. I heard that was the case. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong because I didn't completely research. However, um, I'm glad that now that's definitely not their purpose. Okay. Um, yeah, that's definitely not their purpose. Now it's just 
you know, they're, Hamas is looking at Palestine, Palestine. I said Palestine in Arabic, but nonetheless, they're looking at Palestine and saying, you know, we protested peacefully numerous times, and many of those, I mean, some of those times or many of those times we, we got massacred or just killed. So, similar to the Black Panthers, I think they're currently doing that. And I'm not saying whether Hamas is perfect, good or bad, but I'm just saying my description of them. Um, yes. Okay, so what 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 it for for what for what purpose what what is uh, what is being argued here is it a territory thing is it is it getting rid of uh religion slash belief to have a bigger uh opposing party like what what's what's the purpose here why is this happening all right well there's many angles to answer that question since there are multiple questions in one but the main way to that I can personally answer your question is that I know that it all started as Reyes and I spoke about the 1948 Belfort Declaration. Okay. And with that being said, before that, it was initially just Palestine, Palestine, the land. And then in 1948, very like at the end of World War II, unfortunately, obviously many Jewish people had, they had happened to suffer in World War II. We all know that. And it's unfortunate. Um, many of them were refugees and came to Palestine. And thankfully, you know, they were accepted. That made me happy, obviously. And then um, eventually, though, Zionism, that idea, that started to get into play. So, Zionism. Uh, yes. So oh, define you, Zionism? Yeah, please. Okay. What I define it as, but of course I should look it up. But what I define it as is the mission to take as much as Palestine as possible mm-hmm. and kick Palestinians off their land. Okay. Um, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying there shouldn't be a land for Jews or anything. I'm not saying that, no. Um, but basically taking more and more of Palestinian land to the point where Palestinians have almost nothing. Uh, okay. Currently, uh, Palestine only has Gaza, Gaza, or in the U.S. we say Gaza, and they only have uh, West Bank. Okay. But yes. So when you say they have them, like, what do you mean? As, as in like backup? Like, oh, what like, is in territory? Okay, so is, is this ultimately a territory thing? Is, is this Yes not, or no. Okay, okay, so what do you um, mean by the no part? I say no because although territory is a huge part of it, it's also when you look at the people, I mean, the, the allies that are in charge, that's also a big part of the play. And as well as people could claim religion, it depends how you look at it. But yeah, so it's pretty much the combo of those three. That's why I say yes and no. Okay. But yes, it's still territory is the huge factor. One could argue it's the number one factor. Okay. Ray, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, just to piggyback off of uh, what Issa was saying, I-, I say it's more so of a territorial thing. Okay. Um, can I go into like the history? Yeah, please. Of, please uh, do. Please yeah. do. Uh, well, so what we ultimately want to do is have a basic understanding of what exactly is going on, why it's going on, and and what can we best do to, to better understand these type of mm-hmm. you know things that we're hearing in, in, in the news and all that kind of stuff. So any sort of information that gives us a better base understanding is going to help. That's what essentially I want to do. So yes, please go into the okay. history of it. Yeah. Yes, what I know is uh, over you know the land is a conflict between the land. You know who's who's the rightful owner of this land. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I looked at it. I I took a step back. I'm like, okay, Palestinian side and then the Israelis. So I looked at the history of, you know, both sides um, and then the land itself. So that land, also known as the Holy Land, that was occupied at one point um, by the Jews, the actual Jewish people, um, occupied that land for, I want to say, centuries uh, up until... Uh, I want to say the during the Roman Empire after the sack of Jerusalem. So I can also uh, put in a little bit of biblical, you know, history into this too, as it applies. Um, so after the Roman, right before that Roman Empire fell, I want to say like in 70 AD, um, the emperor at that time sacked Jerusalem and the occupants of that land, which were the real Jews, they were actually dispersed to the four corners of the earth. So there's scriptures that back this up, that the real Jews would be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Um, and then the land would then be trodden down by, um, it's a term called Gentiles. So if you look uh, the word Gentiles in the Zonervan Bible Dictionary, 
Gentile means non-Israelites, so the the the, the in not the the inhabitants that would be in in the Holy Land, mm-hmm. but they weren't actually of the Israelite stock. Okay. So in Scripture it says that that land would then be would be trodden down, meaning occupied by Gentiles, so non-Israelites, because how I mentioned early a little bit earlier is that the real Jews would be dispersed because. Uh, the Roman Empire, you know, sent them to slavery and all this. So they were, the real Jews weren't in that land no more. So then who came in? Gentiles, so non-Israelites. So I want to say after, I want to say like the early, like during the Middle Ages, it was like 1100, 1200s. I believe that land was then occupied by like nomadic tribes. And then uh, I want to say at the turn of like the, 1600s 1700s it was then ottoman turks uh if you know ottoman empire they were uh occupying that land for a while until i want to say the uh ninth early in 19th century so we're talking about the 1800s okay. was then um like muslims like Ar- Ar- arabs that mm-hmm. occupied that land, or aka the palestinians so they were then the new occupants of that land after the ottoman empire um and so they were occupying that land and so they were essentially they they the rightful owners at that time mm-hmm. they were occupying that land and then how the Jews come about or the Israelis um is I want to say right after World War II as Isa mentioned 1948 that was last year World War II uh the Belford Declaration declared that Israel would be a sovereign nation so these displaced Jews that were, you know, during the Holocaust and, you know, dispersed all over the place, they need, you know, they needed to be, so, needed to, um, be somewhere. You know, they, they were just like nomads. What was that um, word? You, refugees. Okay. Right. So Zionists and the higher ups, I think at that time, um, they passed the, def- the Belfort Declaration that these Jews would now occupy that land. So mm. essentially kicking out. The then occupants at that time, which were the Palestinians, which at that time, you know, they weren't happy that they would have to be essentially kicked out Mm -hmm. into the Gaza Strip was just a a small area in southwest Israel. That's poverty stricken. And these people were just just kind of forced into this land. You know what I mean? So the whole thing about like wars, you know, with the, the, the whole conflict with the Palestinians and the Jews is that the Israelis, they became an actual independent sovereign nation after 1948, but the Palestinians still, you know, felt like they were the rightful owners of that land because they were there first. So that's how it really came about, just the conflict, like right after the Belfort Declaration. That makes sense. Okay, okay. Uh, Isai, anything you want to add to that, or did that clear it up pretty well? So far, uh, so good. I'll let you know if I got some. Okay. Um, so, and I guess, I guess my next question would be is, you know, this has been like something that's been blowing up all over the media in the past month. So, do like, is there any specific reason why, like, all of a sudden now it's like making all the headlines? You know, I, I'll go on social media now, and and the people I follow, if they're not talking about. Uh, Israel and Palestine, they get you know they get a guilt trip into talking about it, or or like uh, one of the people that I immediately could think about is uh, uh, DJ Khaled. I believe he's uh, what, what is he exactly? Do you know? Is, is he? Is, oh, go ahead. His 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 family comes from uh, Palestine, right? Mm-hmm. So like and people like celebrities like that, they like in the comment section they are saying like, oh, you're not gonna say anything about Palestine or stuff like that. So why? Why, like, what just happened? Was there like an attack overnight? Like, what exactly is going on currently? Right. You want to go back since like round robin? Um, I think it's due to the media and who actually you know has the power of the media. So, uh, not to go off topic, but um, the ones uh, at the top of like you know your CNN, like these top news broad, like news stations, mm-hmm. are Jewish people okay so um during you know after 1948 there was always little skirmishes uh small wars between the palestinians and the 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 israelis Mm -hmm. um but i think i want to say just last month the palestinians actually um took offense and actually uh sent rockets 
and actually bombed uh, part of Israel. Okay. So that kind of started everything. Uh, it culminated to now, where uh, then Israel had to, you know, count, yeah. had to counter. Yeah. Had to counter that. Okay. Yeah. And then again, like you so, know, it's 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 crazy what you're saying now in the media. Like, it, if you go on Twitter, like now known as X, um, what's it called? You you see all the videos of everything that's going on. Um, all the people that are that are killed and mm -hmm. and and all the bodies that are laying everywhere. I've seen videos of uh, you know you go in a room and then it's just like a, or like a room, like a regular bedroom, right? The average bedroom size and it's just like filled with with people just dead on the floor. Blood is scattered everywhere from like the people just going in and and just like slaughtering everybody. That's what yeah, essentially and the, it looks like. And the so. sad thing about it is that. These uh, attacks are not even on like military bases, uh, other you know mil you know mil military personnel. It's who innocent people. Okay, you know what I mean. So it's like families. Like you say, oh, um, elderly children. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, and this is on both sides. You know, both the Palestinians against the Israelis and the Israelis. You know, counterattack on. You know, so it's but both sides is like mass casualties. On the innocent, okay, you know, they're, they're, that at the end of the day, that's that's who's suffering is the, the you know the the regular people. You know what I mean? And and he said like I remember when we were uh, going to watch a football game a few weeks ago, we we explored on the idea of ex seeing the the geolocations over like Snapchat. You know how in Snapchat you could go into and then see like what's going on in specific locations and see stories. And um, we we started seeing all of them. It's just like the drastic difference from like here or the place in 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 the eastern in the eastern world, and see what's going on there. So like, what what are your takes on that? Good points. They were like day and night. Okay. Um. Yeah, I could, I could go on on that, but before I do, uh -huh. I do want to say, um, you did ask a question to both of us. Before I say that, I will say. I do remember on October 7th, or roughly around that time, mm. um, I heard the media talking about Hamas or Hamas attacking Israel. Um, I do remember hearing about that. I don't know the death toll, but I do want to say the sad truth is for some things, the death toll, let's just say from Hamas attacking Israel, um, there's exaggerations with some death tolls, though. But nonetheless, um, exaggerations as in like they're they're not accurate numbers. Yes, I meant to say um, yes, and there's some false statements basically. Okay, and it's it's funny to see how Israel comes out with um, some false claims sometimes, and eventually they own up to a couple of them, which is surprising that they would even say, "Oh, we were wrong." Okay. But um, for example, the false claiming of the beheading babies. But nonetheless, um. I'm glad to see, like, when I spoke with many Muslims, uh, I'm definitely glad to see any of them say, yeah, we don't even like any type of civilian uh, deaths that occur on either side. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm definitely glad to see people um, saying, like, any type of civilians is just not right. But, uh, I mean, any type of civilian death. But nonetheless, what was your initial question that you asked, uh, Reyes and I? Because I didn't uh, answer that since I forgot what it was exactly. So essentially, it was it was just like what made it like all of a sudden like pop off on like headlines and the media and all that stuff. And Reyes went on to say about the the, the sudden attack um, that you know caught everybody by the media like by surprise essentially. And and now it's just what's going on, what you're hearing about left and right, or anywhere you you turn your head to. All right. Well, thanks for reiterating that. Mm -hmm. I will say it's crazy how. Post, I mean, not post pandemic, but mm -hmm. post 2020, when TikTok and other things were on the rise, we see certain things get viral. But nonetheless, my answer is the same as Reyes, mm -hmm. which is literally the media and how they were brought up and why. So basically, the media and the people in power as so, well. So let's um, let, let, let's let's narrow that down. When you say the media, do you mean like the main media, or do you mean like secondary media, such as like? You know, people out there with like their own like personal networks, like like podcasts and stuff like that. Or are you talking about like the CNNs of the world, the the, the CNBCs of the world, or like or Fox, all that stuff? Like, who are you referring to? Primarily, I'm referring to 
the media on TV, for example, okay. CNN and Fox and more. Okay. To answer your question, I also want to say I'm scared to say this in public. Okay. But you know what? If I get harmed or dead for this, so be it. But, you know, at least it's worth it due to the fact that there's a genocide going on. I'd rather save my own. I mean, I'd rather save their lives if this quote I'm going to say helps. I'd rather save put save their lives and put my lives on a, my life on a line. Nonetheless, what I'm going to say is it's not a quote, but um, I had to take a breath. So I watched a video and it sounds like Gaza or Gaza, um, that strip Due to the fact that it's on the coast, it's good economically for people, whoever is living on there. So let's just say if the Israelis or the people of Israel, if they have that occupied by them, and well, mainly the Zionists, right? If they have that access to that land as if it's theirs, then it's going to be at the point where, wow, forget the Suez, Suez Canal. Or maybe they'll use both. But at the end of the day, like the Gaza Strip will bring in so much money. Even though it, the Israeli government is already getting tons of money from the U.S., although that's already the case, having access to the Gaza Strip, it will get them even more money. And um, I'm not surprised by seeing the genocide occur and then a ceasefire still hasn't happened. But yeah, but to answer your question, the main TV media sources, like CNN and so, as well as the financial aspect of Gaza, I think that's the reason why this is getting more amplified. Although people don't talk about that financial aspect. And mm -hmm. I was surprised when I learned this because my ancestors come from from the Red Sea because my country is, my other country is Eritrea. Mm -hmm. So our neighbors are Sudan and our Red Sea neighbors include Falstein, Israel, as well as uh, Egypt. But yeah, those are the two main reasons. Okay. Uh, Ray, is any input on that, on the economic, potential economic interest? So as far as I know, the Gaza Strip um, is where the Palestinians were, you know, pushed into. And as far as I know, it's still under control under Israel because at one point they um, cut off the water to Gaza. So let's let you know, like, who's actually in power. And so this goes back to, you know, the whole, why it's they're warring against each other is because if you, you know, look at videos and, and uh, pictures of Gaza, it's poverty stricken. Okay. You know, it's poverty stricken. So that's another reason why it's like, Hey, you know, they're oppressing. They're there. That's mm -hmm. what the Palestinian side is saying. It's like, Hey, you pushed us into this small little strip, the Gaza strip. Mm -hmm. And then you're oppressing us within that. So um, that goes that. But, uh, you know, as far as um, they want to just quickly just touch up on on as far as the, like the media, yeah, like the major news sources, outlets, CNN, Fox, all that. Um, I, I, I mentioned that the higher ups are like Jew, so-called Jewish yeah, right, right. people. So if you notice the overwhelming, not saying all, but overwhelmingly majority of uh, news are going to say that. Israel is like the victim mm -hmm. and the Palestinians are, you know, the ones, you know, attacking this and that um, for the fact that, again, the higher ups in the media mm -hmm. are going to show you Israel is the is the victim. But okay. again, I, we got to look at it both ways. Like, Palestinians have been being oppressed by who? None other than the Israelis. OK, mm -hmm. so what do you if you guys don't mind me asking, like. What do you guys think is uh, personal? Like, what do you guys think the the role of the U.S. is in this situation? Whoever wants to take a stab at it. Uh, the role of the U.S. Uh, because I know that Israel and U.S. are close knit. Mm -hmm. They're almost like bro big brother and little brother. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is backing and essentially um, funding, you know, this genocide that's happening to the the Palestinians. Okay. Like my brother right here just said, that's my answer too. Um, definitely, the U.S. is definitely on the side of Israel. Okay. Their government. Okay, and I heard something about. I'm not sure if this is in line with this, but something about some assets being on frozen with Israel, like around the time of this, conveniently right around the time of this happening, and then the attacks happening. Do you guys hear about that by any chance? I only heard about the other way around, or okay. maybe it depends. was it the other way around. I mean, well, I can't say whether it was or was not, okay. but I will say I know people who are 
doing fundraisers for Frolstein and okay. to refugees and just to orphans and other people suffering in general. Uh-huh. And then their funds were frozen. Okay. Their funds were frozen. And these are guys from the U.S. These uh-huh. are guys from even the U.K. as well. I'm not surprised. What I meant to say is no. These are guys from the U.S. I wouldn't be surprised if it applied to people in the U.K. as well. So that's what I meant to say. But nonetheless, guys from the U.S., Americans, literally, their funds are being frozen when they're raising money mm-hmm. for others. So um, that's what I'm aware about. But okay. I do know that I th- no, no, I'm confident that Philistines, uh, people from Palestine do use the shekel, so mm-hmm. the same currency as Israel. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe that's relevant. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so where do you guys think this is going to go? Well, what direction is this heading in? That is a tough but necessary question. My sad assumption is for the next two weeks at least, I'm worried that a continued genocide will happen. I never wanted that to happen. I, I proudly protested in 2021 in May, and I will continue to protest, even though it's against my mother's wishes because she naturally cares. But nonetheless, um, I think th- a genocide will continue, in my personal opinion, I, until a ceasefire comes. I heard that, I, I, I forget who I heard this from, and somewhere in the media was like, this is the closest thing we've experienced uh, to date to the Holocaust. How true is that? I don't know how to answer that, but um, I can say in some aspects, absolutely. And it's crazy how the open air prison is definitely compares, comparable to concentration camps. And I wouldn't be surprised like if Gaza had too many, two million people. I think that's a population. Their size of their land is extremely small. I could probably compare it to Delaware or even a third of Delaware. But um, I definitely want to uh, let Rhea yeah, say what he got to say, too. But I'm excited about this specific question, though, because I will happily go on about that. Yeah, yeah please do. Um, as far as comparable to the Holocaust, uh, I mean, just with all the death toll, you know, the amount of death toll and casualties, they're definitely on the way up there. You know, I don't. Because I think I believe the Holocaust what was it like six million Jews were killed, executed. Um, you know, as this continues, it could very well, you know, I mean, hopefully there is a ceasefire. But you know, back to your question, uh, Emilio, is where do I see this going? Um, I mean, I'm hoping, for a, I'm hoping for a ceasefire that way. You know, these like I said, the, the, it's the innocent, innocent people on both sides that are you know uh, dying. So as soon as the the ceasefire, a ceasefire. The sooner, you know, people can start kind of rebuilding and lives will start being, you know, stop being lost. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the first and foremost thing is, you know, ceasefire. But, I mean, as far, as long as, you know, the, the harsh reality is that as long as Israel and U.S. are together, I don't see a ceasefire. Like I said, you know, the U.S. is the one funding you know, this war. And I don't know if you guys know anything really about uh, war, but it's profitable. So they want to continue this war, um, you know, to make money, you know. Um, so, so there's a territory <clears throat> issue, but the, mm-hmm. there might be an even bigger issue of an economic interest here. That Absolutely. Which sounds like, you know, everything is a conspiracy until it's proven true. Right, and I hear a lot of the things that, you know, when we went over after, like, 9-11, how one of the things I hear is that, you know, it it wasn't, you know, there was, it was, like, internally done, mm-hmm. and the reason it was done is just to, you know, cause war because of the economic interest, interest over in the Middle East. Um, That's right. So, like, is this, like not too far apart from something like that is this like history happening right rhyming in a different way Miller, you're absolutely correct that's that's literally it yep okay that's literally it and then you know pa- uh, hamas again uh hamas is just an ideology they're palestinians who believe um militarily like hey that you know israel needs to be essentially wiped off from the face of the earth earth so hamas is like the military organization if you will okay. for the palestinians okay just so you know if anyone was kind of like confused like oh who's hamas who are palestinians hamas is just an ideology 
um, of Palestinians who get together military who try, who want to essentially uh, wipe off Israel from the face of the earth. Um, but not only does Israel have allies with the U.S., the Palestinians, hey, they they're, they they have allies too. Um, you know, all the like uh, Isa mentioned, all the bordering nations in and around Israel and Palestine. Uh, more so all the Muslim countries, all the other Arab countries. So you got like Egypt, uh, up north of Israel, you got um, uh, Lebanon, Lebanon, Syria, Saudi Arabia. Eventually, you know, I see them kind of, they're, 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 they're looking at this. You know, the whole world is looking. Jordan, as well. uh, Jordan uh, Iraq, Iran is a big, uh, big country. So uh, look, at, look at all those countries that I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. This could very well be a prelude to, you know, something bigger. Okay. World War Three. I mean, I don't right. know. Right. Okay. Uh, anytime soon, but I mean, as of right now, how things are going, um, it could very well get to escalate to that point. You Lisa know, just with the amount of a nations kind of backing, you know, these two main ones with Israel and mm-hmm. Palestine, and you already know it, it, America is back then with they're the uh, they're the leaders of NATO, mm-hmm. and NATO is pretty much uh, most of the EU, European Union. So you got NATO, America, Israel, and then all Arab world, all the Arab nations. So you kind of see the the grand how this can very well escalate into something bigger. Hmm. You said anything you want to add to that? Yes, indeed. So, uh, well, first a serious disclaimer. Um, I did smile at one of my friends on camera, but um, mm-hmm. since it's a serious topic, I just want to let you know. Oh, he did that smiling towards one of my friends. It yeah, wasn't right. anything cool. Awesome. Um, nonetheless, all right, well, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, certain theories and mm-hmm. until they're proven true. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of the 9-11 one, uh, I don't really, I'm not surprised if it's true, but yeah, and nonetheless, mm-hmm. my, I just don't know what to comment for that. But yeah, nothing surprises me based on other things I've seen in U.S. history and stuff. Um and then other than that, I will say in terms of getting into war within the Middle East, like with many Arab countries, Arab countries, um, and other Muslim countries, yeah, I know for a fact those wars were definitely for the sake of financial reasons. And like Reyes mentioned, wars are profitable. It is the sad truth, but it is absolutely profitable. And yeah, we definitely took oil from... Iraq or the country Iraq um, we definitely did that millions of lives were lost um, Afghanistan as well definitely I believe we took maybe opium or similar things from there and I can go on but definitely definitely a profitable thing unfortunately mm-hmm. and then um, yeah the other thing I wanted to mention you know I can go on about this mm-hmm. I'm grateful you know like Reyes is very objective and you know I support that I also like how he mentioned Israel literally put cement in the water. Like, it's it's wild how the media portrays all this what's going on, right? As if Israel is the primary victim. Of course, you know, victims definitely exist in both countries, and I will never, ever deny that. But um, it's really wild how the media does that but hey on a positive note when you look at the hashtags for like i'm a stand with palestine stand with israel the last time i checked stand with palestine was roughly three billion hashtags i'm not exaggerating uh, maybe 2.8 billion i'm surprised i'm saying that too because the world is like what seven billion people in general or so yeah so israel maybe like stand with israel maybe had about a billion or less but nonetheless, it just goes to show, like, whoever's in power has the ability to tell people what they believe is true. The narrative. Has Correct. The ability to control the narrative. Yep. Exactly. And I'm going to tell you, man, I lived in Mexico, and I plan on going back soon, but I'm going to say, um, I talked to my friends, and I was like, hey, you know, when I spent six months there, I never met a Palestinian living there. I met one that was visiting, but I never met a Palestinian living there. I met very few Arabs and other Muslims. So, and whenever I talk to like the local people there, 
I went to 11 states, by the way, out of 32. Mm-hmm. But when I talked to the local people, they, they, some of them told me they never met a Muslim. So most of them probably never knowingly met a Muslim or never knowingly met an Arab, right? So, but these people still speak up. And I say that to say, you know, it's out of gratitude. Mm-hmm. They don't even know these people in their regular daily lives. But guess what? They still speak up. So why do I say what I say? Because, like, they're from, depending on how you look at it, they're from the global south, depending on how you look at it. Even though they are definitely, you know, it's, it is North America at the end of the day. But they really dislike how the media works. So that's why they always seek out for the truth. And I noticed, yeah, just in general, my friends who live in different countries, especially Latin America, they literally seek out the truth. They they, they literally seek justice. Um, but yeah, I went on that tangent because that was really important to me how they, most of them, or all, most of them don't even see Muslims in their daily lives. And they said, nah, this is still injustice. You know what I mean? So um, I thought that was really cool. But I, I, the last thing I want to mention is the death toll. I wouldn't be surprised if the death toll of Palestinians, 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 was ten to eleven thousand people. I wouldn't be surprised if that was true as of October seventh. Um, I don't know the death toll from nineteen forty eight, but nonetheless, like, yeah, and apparently five thousand people that were killed since October seventh were children. Just imagine how many people are dying every minute, every hour. In full steam. Like it's, yeah. And I can't imagine, they don't even have control over their own water. They don't have control over a lot of things. I'm not surprised if their fuel's being taken either. A lot of resources. But yeah, thanks for, I I strongly appreciate you all letting me go on this specific tangent because it was definitely necessary. So thank you all. Of course, no, please. And that's literally what I was aiming to do having this recording is open up this dialogue because specifically in our age range, especially in the media, social media, you know, it's people want to engage, people want to talk about it, but they don't know exactly where to start, right? And I was hoping that this kind of opens up that forum of communication in terms of what is what is going on. So if anything, thank you both for doing this, but... That's just what I what I want to be able to provide for anyone. But Reyes, did you have anything to add on as well to what uh, he said here was saying? Um, I mean, yeah, like I said, both sides. You know, like back to um, you know the uh, you know the media and everything. Again, like I mentioned earlier, um, the majority of the overwhelmingly, uh, like I guess you could say the narrative is again the majority is. Um, that Israel is the victim. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I would urge people to do is just, you know, actually do your own research. You know, if if you you see a news uh, bro- uh news station saying, oh, the Palestinians are the victim, um, or the other way around, the Israelis are the victims. Just look at it, you know, from afar and like, okay, let me gather my own you know, conclusion off of what I've come to research. So I actually dig into, you know, looking into articles. I mean, we are living in, what do they call it, the age of information, mm-hmm. you know? Actually research, you know, and then conclude your own assessment after you've, you know, gathered everything that you, you know, possibly yeah. wanted to research and then conclude from there and not just go off of what, you know, a news anchor person is yeah. saying, oh, Israeli is is the victim or Palestinians are a victim. Just look at it both ways, you know, look at it, but do your own research. Um, and, and yeah, and, and, and to, to add on to that, I would say, and in terms of anything, don't just research what you want to find. Also research what you don't want to find. Like specifically look up that, that opposite side of things because well, we're just looking for what we want to look for. We're right. going to get what we want to look for and not yeah. exactly the other side of things. So, I absolutely agree with that. And mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that goes down into like, you know, how do we go about finding the truth? And I guess that's one particular way to go about it. Yeah. Um, is there any other way you want to add on to that? Like, I don't know, maybe who's more reliable today? Is it the, the mainstream media, secondary media? Definitely not the mainstream media. Um, I would look in, uh, what I would urge people to do is look at independent news yep. you know 
that are basically non-biased giving you the facts kind of like what you know i'm trying to give is just the facts you know look at both sides and you know um so there there's independent um news things you can find on like um uh on youtube am i buddha can i like shout please. out like yeah uh, please okay so one i would highly recommend it's uh it's a couple um so they're uh, show is called Redacted. That's R E D as in dog, A C T E D. Redacted. Mm-hmm. N- uh, Natalie and Clayton Morris. Okay. What do um, they talk about? So they talk about current events. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They mention, you know, in the beginning of the each episode, you know, hey, you know, this is redacted and uh, we bring you the cold, hard truth, like the facts, nothing but the facts uh, that the, and they even say it, that the, um, the, the news media, uh, is not willing to, um, you know, present us. Right, right. So they bring just the facts from, you know, other, like, independent journalists that are, like, for example, for the uh, the issue going on in uh, Gaza and Israel, they they have connects with people, like, journalists, independent journalists in there, like, um, and they report back of actually what is actually going on, you know, the real stuff that's actually going on. Same thing with you. They have topics on the Ukraine and Russia, you know what I mean? Um, and just um, also here in the U.S., um, issues going on here with like the, uh, what is it, the what was it, concentration camps with like the um, the the kids from like Central and Mex- Central America and Mexico. There's like yeah. actual like camps here in Mexico that are housing, here in the U.S., housing these children. Oh, okay. okay. To be shipped off to like right, human right, trafficking, right, right, right. Yeah. stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so they, 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 uh, um, talk about different things, not only just here in the U S but internationally as well. But right. yeah, that's why you know, I just urge people to do, you know, their own research. Um, I did want to also mention, um, just taking it back to earlier when I said is, uh, this is like biblical, mm-hmm. um, and in a way I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, force anyone, you know, to, you know, believe in, you know, the Bible or God, if you're not. But I'm just giving you the facts. This is what it says, you know, in the Bible that, you know, how I mentioned earlier that the land would no longer be occupied the, by the real Jews. After the Roman, after the fall, uh, right before the fall of the Roman Empire, the real Jews were, you know, displaced, dispersed, sent into slavery all throughout the world. Um, and then that land and the scriptures in the Old Testament that mentioned then that land would then be, you know, occupied by. There would always be conflict. That's first and foremost. So every, if you, uh, if you do his a little bit of research in history, ever since the disbursement of the real Jews out of uh, Israel, there's always been conflict, and that's where I mentioned the Ottoman Empire, the the Arabs, the, and to current events now with mm-hmm. Israel and Palestine. So God mentioned in the scriptures that all throughout history up until like now, there's there would always be conflict in that land because the real Jews weren't there. So you guys are probably thinking, well, what do you mean, right? It's like the the real Jews aren't the Jews in Israel currently the real Jews? Well, like I mentioned earlier, that in Scripture it said that that land would be trodden down by the Gentiles. Gentiles meaning non-Israelites, right? Non-Israelites, because the real Jews were dispersed, sent into slavery, and uh, you know into the four corners of the earth. So I'm probably sure what y'all are thinking right now. Well, then who are the real Jews? And that could be for another uh, episode. Mm-hmm. That could be for another episode. But, yeah. you know, just back to scriptures, that land would always just, there would constantly be conflict. Mm-hmm. Constantly con- constantly be conflict and wars. Isa, what do you one. think? What is, what is the proper route to, to take here to find the truth as a consumer? Pretty much the same message. Um, I am excited to check out Redacted. They sound like a very objective source. So I'm excited to check that out. I do know, I, fun fact before I mention, uh, not a fun fact, one side note before I mention the two people that people should uh, definitely follow. I noticed that a lot of a lot of people when others argue and they have a debate, you know, a lot of people, like I, I had specific conversations with some Israelis. You know, I met them as I traveled and a lot of the things they say are based off purely words but a lot of the stuff Palestini supporters say like myself uh, is that we have videos we have photos and the amount that we have compared to y'all is extremely high 
Um, I also wanted to mention a shout out to many Latin American countries whose governments have definitely uh, supported uh, fighting against the genocide, especially Bolivia, one of my favorite countries, um, and Belize, especially. But nonetheless, to answer your question directly, I want to say Mu'taz, uh, Mu'taz, Aziza, and Mohammed El Kurd. Um, they have some good accounts. Um, so to spell their names, what I remember is M O T A Z and then Aziza. So A Z I Z A. If you search that up, you should be able to find that on Instagram. And then Mohammed El Kurd, um, M O H A M M E D, and then E L. K-U-R-D. So that's how I would find them on um, Instagram. But I definitely like the objective information they have been giving. Um, yeah. What role do we have as as consumers of this information in media? What's our role here? What's our responsibility? Uh, uh, like, as I like you Right, because you, you guys yeah. are, are suggesting places to where we could, you know, read more, hear more. But... What's our responsibility as individuals here? Not, I would say one of them is talking about it, right? But what other responsibility is uh, do we civic is the word civ- civically have as as individuals here? Um, all right, in terms of actions, I think that might be a good word. I'd say so. I know that I'm a biased person in this topic, but um, with that being said, I'll say. Other than the fact that you got to use your voice, literally be willing to boycott. Um, we we both, no matter what side people are on, we know for a fact that Israel has way more money than Palestine. I mean, Palestine, uh, Palestine. Um, yeah, Palestine doesn't have a true army at all. Never has since 1948. So with that being said, our tax dollars fund the Israeli government. So what do I mean when I say boycott? To be blunt and direct, I stopped going to McDonald's. I stopped going to Burger King and other places. And it's more to that, you know what I mean? But basically reduce. Oh, I recommend to eliminate your usage, but people got to just reduce their usage of many products for many co- companies and many services for many companies. Um, and I like the success that it's been giving. Like you notice that Domino's Papa John's and other sources have been giving some incentives to like, Hey, if you do this, we'll give you free this or free delivery all week, or we'll reduce our prices. I'm not surprised that they're doing it at a desperation. Yeah. They got customers, but without a lot of supporters, I mean, without without the Palestine supporters, your customer base is reducing. So, yeah. So, the point is, I like how boycotting is making a big difference. Um, Also, but to answer your question, boycotting, using your voice, and protesting. Um, I also like what the Bay Bridge did in uh, protesting today. I found it really impactful. Um, Yeah. What What did they do? A bunch of protesters... Just literally just protested there. Okay. I will say the traffic was huge, though, of cars. So, yeah, that's unfortunate for them, uh, the drivers. But nonetheless, um, I'm proud of people for standing up for human rights. Reyes, any call to action? Uh, Just to simply, uh, you know, our duty as, you know, people, you know, not directly, you know, in that land and dealing with that is... Just to educate ourselves, I think that's the most important thing is to actually educate ourselves. That way, you know, we can come to a, you know, conclusion, hey, what, you know, what needs to be done um, for both sides, you know what I mean? So I think uh, that's our duty currently is just to gather as much information and, you know, educate ourselves. Guys, any uh, closing thoughts, comments or anything you want to deliver before we close out this episode? No, that you go first. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I appreciate it because I didn't want to forget it. <laughs> thank you. Um. Okay, so I forgot to mention ed- educating others and educating them in a specific way. So comment sections, I find them pretty pointless. I try to reduce from that. 
in terms of my usage. Um, but yeah, really educating others in a harmless way. So I, I know that pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminded me of your episode <laughs> where we had that issue. <laughs> it's all right. I know what you're talking about. Thank yeah. you, man, for understanding. Um, all right. So yeah, educating others. Like I noticed that, you know, if you if you come at people and you'd be like, "Yo, you're such an idiot. You don't see what's going on." You know what I mean? Like name calling people and just give an attitude or whatever. It goes nowhere. It makes people want to be defensive of anything. Um, and we, we talked about this, uh, right. about other topics like last week. Um, so yeah, like I even talked to Israelis, um, and like, unfortunately, like most of the ones I talked to were against my beliefs, but like, yeah, I just presented them facts, but it went nowhere. So I just reduced my conversations and I gave them a heads up. I'd be like, Hey, I'm going to respond super late at this point. Um, or just, yeah. So basically, um, just do it without insulting people, pretty much. Uh-huh. Um, and let people get out what's on their mind. Um, presenting objective information. Um, I definitely... I, I wrote some stuff from, like, before the podcast started that I wanted to say. Uh-huh. So, it's easy for me to remember because it's written down. Um, but to answer your question of, do we have anything to close out? Um, my answer is yes, but I can definitely do it afterwards. Um, Reyes, feel free, my man. Oh, yeah. thank you. Sure. All right, so before anybody starts coming after me, you know, what I mentioned that, you know, the current um, Jewish people, the Israelis, aren't the real Jews. Before anyone just starts coming at me, you know, uh, it's it's biblical, it's, it's, it's in the Bible, you know, I'm just speaking Bible, I'm speaking facts, that's what's stated in there, you know, it, and if someone wants to dispute it, I mean, just read it for yourself, you know, um, the whole conflict is because essentially God's actual chosen people are out of that dispersed out of that land, and He at the end times that He's gonna draft His chosen people back in. But until then, there's gonna be conflict within that region. So the whole fighting, it's over. You know whose whose land is this? But like I mentioned, it could um, I don't want to go off like off topic, but that could be maybe be for another episode. Like mm-hmm. who does that land rightfully belong to? Mm-hmm. You know, certainly, yeah. The conversation certainly doesn't stop here, right? Um, but yeah, just tell everybody is, you know, be open minded. Like I said, you know, like I've been saying um throughout the whole episode is, you know, just educating yourself and not just uh, gravitating towards um the first, you know, um opinion or you know some, the first thing that someone says and you just take that and run with it. Be open minded and actually, you know, look at other sources. Mm-hmm. You know, and like Issa was uh, mentioning, you know, what he said was, you know, educate others too. So once you get this information, um, you know, share it with other people and actually have like, you know, civil conversation with, with other people, others. And that way this gets spread out a lot more like who, you know, what what's actually going on? Because there's a lot of again misinformation going around. And so we as a people got to really, you know, educate our own selves to then spread out this, uh, the, the correct, you know, the, the facts to others. Yeah. All right. Well, so. Thank you, Race. Isa, well, thank you. what did you want to close us out on? Thank you very much. All right. So, um, okay. Unfortunately, I watched some gruesome videos, but I don't regret watching or sharing them because I'd rather fight towards the goal of saving lives at the risk of my own. Um, so, with that being said, I vividly watched a person urinate on and kick a bo- dead body. I'm pretty sure that dead body was a Falstini, Falstinia lady. Um, and it's crazy seeing TikTok and noticing some Israelis just make fun of victims from Falstein. Imagine if the roles were reversed. I would definitely speak out about that if the roles were reversed. Um, but nonetheless, the... Um, yeah, I, I seen videos of some Israelis. Well, one guy, he specifically was drinking water from, like, his sink. And, yeah, the the stuff he was saying was just very disrespectful. It was disrespectful. So the point was that they have clean water, but the Philistines don't. So, yeah, there's definitely that content on TikTok. 
other than that, what other examples do I have? Um, oh, there's another TikTok of somebody, uh, no, people imitating uh, Falestinis who were detained as hostages. Oh, speaking of hostages, um, you know, it's definitely sad to see Israeli hostages in Palestine. Um, but I will admit, a lot of Falestinis are in, still in jail, in prison, in Israel. So, um, yeah, I'm not surprised as to why they did that, to exchange some, um, you know, so they can get their prisoners back from Israel and return them to Palestine. Um, also, you know, just imagine with the hospital. I mean, I know for a fact that um, Falstein did not commit the hospital bombing. And, yeah, like, the fact that a lot of pregnant women, a lot of babies, like, their lives are just most likely going to not exist. It's, they're most likely going to die in a few days or so or weeks, whatever amount of time. But because of the fact that their hospitals are being talk, targeted by the IDF, that army of Israel, it's just ridiculous. Um, definitely trigger warning, but I'm going to say it anyway. Definitely, I definitely recommend looking up the statistics of abuse and even rape from the IDF army. It's sad, but information is definitely necessary to read. So if you're capable of reading it, you know what I mean? If you're mentally not capable of that, totally understand because that's triggering. But it just goes to show like, wow, this is really going on and we're watching this. Um, also, there was a false claim of 40 ba babies being beheaded, uh, 40 Israeli babies. I, um, I'm surprised that Israel came out and said, oh, we were wrong about that. We lied. So I was very surprised to find that out. Um, yeah. And also you could tell like, you know, freedom of speech, right? Like for the most part, the USA does have freedom of speech and we do. Um, like for the most part, we can protest. No problem. I know where, um, where some people come from that just doesn't exist. Um, but guess what? Israel, you know, Tel Aviv, their capital apparently is the most expensive place on earth, apparently. But nonetheless, we both know that Israel, they got money, right? So poverty isn't, I don't even know if it's a problem, but even if it is, it's not as big as a problem as many other places. So why do I say that? They're supposed to have freedom of speech over there, right? And whether they do or they don't, I don't know. But I will say, their protesters, Israeli protesters, get punished for simply protesting a genocide. You know, I thought uh, First Amendment was a thing, but I don't know how things operate over there. So just wanted to point that out. And... Yeah, um, Christians and Muslims do die in Palestine. Of course, there's majority Muslims who die. I don't know if uh, Jews die in Palestine from the IDF, but I'm guessing that they do because I'm sure Jews live in Palestine. Um, but nonetheless, like, I couldn't believe churches were bombed in Palestine. I'm going to repeat that, though, because it's crazy. Churches were, were literally... Hold on, hold on. Churches were bombed in full esteem. Like, this happened in Palestine. From the IDF, of course. The Israeli army. Um, obviously, mosques were definitely harmed, too. I'm not surprised about that at all. Um, people can't even practice religion in some cases. Why do I say that? Because Masjid Al-Aqsa is literally locked up. People can't pray there. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm saying I'm a lot because I can go on about this. But I think, you know what? There's probably going to be another episode at the end of the day, but regardless, I think I'm, I think I'll, I think I'll end it right there. Mm -hmm. well, Thank I, you guys. I told you on your on your episode that you're very likely to come back, and here you are. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Reyes. Reyes has had several appearances here now, but I'll. I'll I just want to say, guys, thank you so much for being willing to have this conversation. I know how sensitive this topic currently is. Uh, I personally was told not to take on this topic, um, but. You know, if you know me, you know when I'm told not to do something, it only encourages me to do more, especially when it's something important, or at least that I deem important. And to my understanding, this is a pretty unimportant situation that's happening. So I think it'd be foolish and idiotic of me to not open up the platform for conversation in such manner. So, again, thank you. I know 
this is serious and I appreciate you guys coming in and short notice and you know opening up your opinions on it. I hope to have you guys back on, whether it be for this matter or other matters. But again, thank you so much. And guys in the background, thank you so much for being here too. And to the audience, you know, clearly, you know, our information is limited. Um, we encourage that you continue the conversation yourselves. And as Issa said earlier, you know, don't belittle other, others. They're just simply just trying to engage in the conversation. Have an open platform as we have displayed here today. We all have different backgrounds, but we come together when it comes to such serious matter. And that being said, thank you again. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody that's watching. And until the next episode. Bye-bye. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much for having us. All right. Nice